Philippines, tagged as the Pearl of the Orient, in Western Pacific region. A country with a variety of natural resources, and a globally significant level of biodiversity. But, due to unstable political system, widespread corruption on national level, and lack of public infrastructure, the prosperous country faded its fame in the last decades. However, as the country undergo internal reforms, that aims to regain its former glory. The government build numerous projects, as the Philippines currently experienced its golden age of infrastructures. As the strong foundation in boosting its economic activities towards a prosperous country. Today, we will feature the top project in the sectors of aviation, railroads, bridges and urban development including the reclamation projects. The biggest rail projects in the Philippines are the Metro Manila Subway and the North-South Commuter Rail. Dubbed as the project of the century. The Metro Manila Subway is an under-construction underground rapid transit line in Metro Manila, Philippines. The 36-kilometer line, which will run north to south between cities of Quezon, Pasig, Makati, Taguig, and Pasig. The first alignment consists of 15 stations from the Quirino Highway to FTI Integrated Terminal. It will become the country's second direct airport rail link after the North-South Commuter Railway, with a branch line to Ninoy Aquino International Airport. As Philippines is inching closer towards having its first subway system, the Department of Transportation DOTR, unveiled on February 2021 a part of a tunnel boring machine. The head cutter, that is crucial to the construction of the Metro Manila subway. On December 22, the transport agency announced that it had ordered a total of 240 train cars for the upcoming Metro Manila subway. Following a contract package signing between the Philippine government and the Sumitomo Corporation and the Japan Transport Engineering Company joint venture, the deal has a total approved cost of 367 billion pesos for the design, supply, installation, construction, testing, and commissioning of train sets for the subway line. That's for 240 train cars or for the 38 car train sets. The first phase of the project, which is four stations from East Valenzuela to North Avenue, is already under construction and expected to be up and running by the end of 2021 or early 2022, with the rest of the subway scheduled to become operational by 2026. The North-South Commuter Railway, also known as the clark Calamba Railway, is a 148 km urban rail transit line being constructed in Luzon. The 36 station lines, run from New Clark City in Capas Tarlac, via Clark International Airport, passing through Metro Manila to Calamba Laguna. The railway system is expected to cost $14.9 billion, making it one of the most expensive projects of the Philippines infrastructure program. Partial operations will begin by 2021, and full operations is expected to begin by 2025. The project is co-financed by the Asian Development Bank ADB, and the Japanese International Cooperation Agency. The project's construction is divided into three phases. Phase 1, the 38 km NSCR North commuter line between Todoban in Metro Manila and Malolos in the province of Bulacan. The construction of the line reached a 43% completion rate as of January 2021. Phase 2, the 53 km NSCR North Regional Line from Malolos via Clark International Airport to New Clark City. Phase 3, PNR Calamba. The improvement of the existing operation of Todoban Station to Calamba in the province of Laguna. Going to the aviation industry. The biggest airport projects are the New Manila International Airport and Clark International Airport Expansion Project. Clark International Airport Development Project The Phase 1 of the four phases for the development of Clark International Airport Expansion Project is now completed. 
the 110,000 square meter terminal building was officially turned over to the Department of Transportation (DOTR) and the Basis Conversion and Development Authority (BCDA) by Megawide GMR Construction Joint Venture on January 22, 2021. The new passenger terminal building now can accommodate 8 million passengers on its opening year, almost tripling the airport's current capacity of 4.2 million to 12.2 million annually. Clark International Airport occupies 2,367 hectares of land inside the Clark Freeport Zone Civil Aviation Complex. The Phase 2 of the project consists of the second terminal building, which can accommodate up to 22 million passengers with an additional runway. Phase 3 project completions can accommodate up to 80 million annual passengers with completion of the third runway. Four new terminals are expected to be completed and all will be fully operational by 2025. Upon completion, these four terminals will boost Clark's passenger capacity to more than 110 million annually. Meanwhile the biggest infrastructure project in the Philippines is the new Manila International Airport. As part of San Miguel Aerocity Incorporated, New Manila International Airport is a proposed development project to construct an airport city in Bulacan, north of Manila. The 2,500 hectares airport will complement the air traffic operations at the existing and overly congested Ninoy Aquino International Airport. The Philippine government awarded the 50 years of franchise to San Miguel Corporation for construction, operation, and maintenance of the airport, including the development of an adjacent airport city, called the San Miguel Aerocity Incorporated. The new Manila International Airport is part of the envisioned 12,000 hectares of Aerotropolis that features residential zones, commercial districts, government centers, seaport and an industrial zone. The proposed airport will feature at least four runways, expandable to six eight taxiways, and at least three terminal buildings. It will have a design capacity of 200 million passengers per year, when fully built, which is about much larger than the current capacity of Naya. Upon completion, the new Manila International Airport will become the world's second biggest airport next only to China's Daxing International Airport in Beijing. The first phase of the project will include a terminal building with airside and landside facilities, taxiways, airport toll road, and two of the four runways in five years. Adding plans to expand the four runways one year later. Preparatory works is scheduled to commence in first quarter of 2021, with the land development project expected to be completed by the end of 2024, and the partial operability is set in the end of 2025. The biggest bridge project in the Philippines are the Bada, Cavite Interlink Bridge, and the Cebu Cordova Link Express. The Bada and Cavite Interlink Bridge, also known as the Manila Bay Bridge, is a bridge for construction by the Philippine government. It will be 32.15 kilometers long and will cross over the Manila Bay. The four main bridge will connect the provinces of Bata and Cavite. It will consist of two main navigation bridges. The starting point will be located near the Maribelli Freeport area, then two single stage bridges called the North Channel Bridge. Main span of 400 meters and South Channel Bridge, main span of 900 meters, will be constructed before ending in Cavite. With the marine bridges standing in water as deep as 50 meters, the detailed design engineering phase of the project is expected to be completed in 15 months. The bridge will need to be high enough to allow large ships to pass through, since Manila Bay is a major shipping route accommodated by the Port of Manila. The National Economic and Development Authority NEDA, approved the bridge project in early 2020 with a budget of 175.7 billion pesos. The implementation of the bridge project is projected to last for six years. Meanwhile, CB Cordova Link Expressway, CC Lens, also known as the CB Cordova Bridge, is a full bridge expressway under construction in Metro Cebu, Philippines.
which will link Cebu City mainland to Cordova and Mactan Island. The bridge will span 8 kilometers and will be the longest and tallest bridge in the Visayas, surpassing the San Juanico Bridge connecting Leyte and Sama, and the Candaba Viada and North Luzon Expressway. The 27-meter wide bridge is meant to serve an alternate route serving the Mactan Cebu International Airport, serving at least 40,000 vehicles daily. The 390-meter long main span of the TC left will be fueled at stage and will be supported by 145-meter high spin tower pylon. The design of the pylon was inspired from the historic Magellan Cross. The main span will have a 51 meter navigation clearance, which allows ships to traverse the bridge. Viaduct approach bridges and a causeway will also form part of the CC left, as well as full road facilities on an artificial island. The full facility's design is inspired from the 8 rays sun of the Philippine flag. The 30 billion peso CV Cordova Link Expressway, CC left, hit a 59.68% completion rate as of January, according to Metro Pacific Voyage Corporation. Smart City Development, the two most related and the biggest urban development in the country is the new Clark City and Clark Freeport Zone Aerotropolis. The proposed metropolis, located 100 kilometers north of Manila, is called New Clark City. With plans to cover 9,450 hectares, it will be bigger than Manhattan and could accommodate as many as 1.2 million people. As part of the Clark Special Economic Zone, it will be administered by Angela City. Out of 9,450 hectares of the city, only 3,500 hectares will be developed, leaving the rest for green and open spaces, making it as a green city. New Clark City Districts The city layout features lots of open spaces where small parks offer opportunities for recreation, socialization, or solitude. The city also designed to have wide walkways and bike lanes through contiguous neighborhoods in this open space method. The city features residential block caters to people from all walks of life. The rich variety of housing options, concretizing the city's vision of a mixed community living in harmony. The Central Park, the city's main commercial center, houses the new Clark City's iconic commercial buildings. Where banks, malls and a rich variety of businesses were located, which offer a complete range of goods and services. Also in the vicinity are hospitals, government offices, churches, theaters, museums, libraries, and community centers. The city will also feature the Innovation District, where diverse institutions will devise industrial solutions, as well as responses to major concerns like climate change and natural disasters. Meanwhile, the industrial hub will cater innovative agricultural and manufacturing enterprises. Nearby agricultural production centers ensure not just abundant food supply, but rich resources for modern agriculture as well. As a smart metropolis, New Clark City features wide and diverse applications of technology for the benefit of the community. Next is the Clark of Freeport Zone Aerotropolis. Clark Freeport Zone is envisioned to be a modern, sustainable aerotropolis. This modern city will encourage positive attitudes toward work and leisure and will provide a conducive environment for businesses and investors to flourish. It is planned to become the highly awaited aerotropolis or airport-driven city in smart cities in the country. As a potential alternative to Metro Manila, the proposed Clark Freeport Zone will become a city that is a combination of a business center, industrial estate, residential community, and user destination. It will be divided into seven districts, which includes the planned Clark Global City as designated District 2 of the Southern Gateway District. With its strategic location, which is adjacent to the newly constructed New Clark City, the development will also be connected to the upcoming Metro Manila Clark Railway (MSCR) and the well-connected and frequent BRT services moving around in the seven districts. The Northern Gateway District is a transit-driven development and a strategic location for the Grand Central Station and intermodal transport terminals for train and bus. This is 
the proposed main interchange linking the Clark Freeport Zone to the International Airport, Kampanga Megalopolis and Metro Manila. More than 1.5 million square meters of parks and open spaces. The lungs of the city are allotted for the seven districts, promoting a good balance between nature and the built environment. Furthermore, the plan provides pedestrian friendly, bicycle, and well landscape streets and elevated pedestrian walkways, shifting the design away from car centered development to promote active and public transport modes. Reclaimed Urban Development in the Philippines The biggest reclaimed urban development is located within Manila Bay, the Horizon Manila, and the SMU Bay City. Horizon Manila is an upcoming mixed-use planned community to be built on a 419-hectare reclaimed land in Manila Bay. It has been described as the biggest reclamation project in Manila, Philippines. The city built on scratch is mapped into three islands, arranged east to west with long faces along the north-south axis, with a four-kilometer long canal park as the main connecting feature in between the islands. This urban valley recalls the settlement of Manila along the Pasig River, and bolsters the idea of Manila as a city by the river. The main highlight of the city is the Canal Park, a unique and enriching feature that will define the lives of all its residents. The Canal Park not only connects the three islands, but also provides Horizon with a public park at its core that stretches all the way to the water's edge, ensuring that Manila Bay Sunset will be always belong to the public. A viaduct with a monorail system allows direct access from Manila to the islands. From the central station, the trackless electric tram system loop around the development, and no place in the island will be more than a five-minute walk away from the tram station. All the roads will be three lines and will feature eight-meter-wide sidewalks with three-meter arcades that ensure shade and any form of weather. The development emphasizes personal mobility, pedestrian and bike lanes, and aims to encourage a car-free lifestyle for more of its residents. clustered towers that keep certain areas shaded all day. There will be a wide array of facilities and amenities to allow a diverse mix of entertainment for its residents, such as pop-up galleries and a state-of-the-art basketball arena. And most importantly, the sunset view of Manila Bay is put into consideration as well, ensuring that this city wonder will be enjoyed by people in the vicinity, with little to no impact to viewers from Rovas Boulevard. The next reclaimed urban development is the SMU Bay City. The Philippines, Pearl of the Orient, and Asia's Rising Tiger, poised for a new beginning. A unique partnership of city government, national authorities, and the private sector. A vision of 726 hectares of reclaimed land to raise along 9.2 kilometers of Manila Bay shoreline. As a modern master plan development, creating a premier Asian destination in the Philippines. A collaboration of the people, government, and enterprise. In response to fast growing cities and rapidly modernizing economy. Designed by local and international planners and engineers, it will provide a new home for 576,000 residents, 924,960 jobs, and 851,666 tourists per year. The reclamation will play an important role in the growth of the region and in Philippine cities. It's a new dawn for the Philippines. A truly global city. A sustainable city to live, work, learn, and play. Promoting community living for realizing your dreams. A green inclusive city with open spaces. Putting Philippines at par with Hong Kong, Singapore, and Sydney with world-class transportation networks and a CPD with fast connectivity to the airport and to the metro. The project will be developed with careful consideration of the surrounding natural habitat. The reclamation is designed to international standards to withstand the strongest typhoon waves and surges with an occurrence of once on a thousand years. Proving soil 
well treated the good, considering extreme seismic conditions. Wides canals to accommodate drainage water from the mainland. The project is truly a milestone, a unique model of collaborative development, aiming towards greater competitiveness and providing greater opportunities for the people.
Don't know what keeps me in your love Why you never let them go Close my eyes, wait for my dreams. It's 
This one goes out to the one I left behind Another road occupy my time This one goes out to the one I love Check my check 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 my check 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 Make 
it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for a living. Make a better place for you and for me. Heal the world. Make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for a living. Make a better place for you and for me. Heal the world. Make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for a living. Make a better place for you and for me. There are people dying if you care enough for a living. Make a better place for you and for me. There are people dying if you care enough for a living. Make a better place for you and for me. 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 I guarantee you that at some point, everything's gonna go south on you. Ready? He's 50 million miles away from home. He's totally alone. What the hell is he thinking right now? I am the greatest botanist on this planet. Isang million tao ang pupunta sa planeta ng Mars at sasakupin ito by 2050? Hey, what's up guys? It's Kentos here. Sa video na ito ay tatalakayin natin ang plano ng isang American business tycoon and billionaire na magkaroon ng isang Mars Colonization Project. Ang Mars mission na ito ay naglalayong magpatayo ng isang syudad na magiging simula ng sibilisasyon ng mga tao sa planeta ng Mars. Ilang dekada na nga ang lumipas mula ng makaapak ang unang tao sa buwan. Matapos ito ay naging sunod-sunod na ang ating mga space explorations dahil nais nating tuklasin ang misteryo ng kalawakan. Dahil nga sa patuloy na pagyabong ng ating siyensya at teknolohiya, maging ang ibang planeta ay nais na rin natin galugarin at kalaunan ay maging ikalawang tahanan. Pero sino nga ba ang taong nasa likod ng mala sci-fi at ambisyosong plano na ito? Yan at iba pa ang ating uusisain kaya make sure na tapusin mo ang video na ito. Bago tayo magpatuloy, kung hilig mo ang mga informative video na katulad nito, Mag-subscribe ka muna and please hit the bell icon para ma-notify ka kapag may mga bago tayong upload. I-like mo na rin ang video na ito at subukan din natin paabutin ito ng 100 likes. Tara at simulan na natin! Kumusta ka tropa? Welcome sa channel kung saan ang kaalaman ay nag-uumapaw. Kasalukuyang pangsyam sa listahan ng Forbes bilang pinakamayamang tao sa buong mundo at may estimated net worth na 68 billion US dollars. Ganyan kayaman at kaimpluensya si Elon Reeb Musk o mas kilala bilang Elon Musk. Siya ay kasalukuyang CEO ng Tesla Incorporated, isang kumpanya ng mga high-tech na kotse, at ang SpaceX, isang kumpanya naman na gumagawa ng mga sasakyan para sa mga space explorations. Naging co-founder din siya ng PayPal, isang online payment platform. Tinagurian bilang isa sa mga trillionaire o ang mga high-tech na entrepreneur na gumagamit ng kanilang sariling pera para gawing posible ang mga akala natin ay sa science fiction lamang natin makikita. Si Elon Musk ay ang bilyonaryong negosyante na nangangarap na sakupin ng tao ang planeta ng Mars. Ang kanyang kumpanya na SpaceX ay nagbabalak na magpadala ng space rocket 
na tinatawag nilang Starship sa planeta ng Mars by 2022. Ito ang robotic cargo flight na tinatawag nilang Heart of Gold. Kukumpirma nito ang posibleng water source at ang mga posibleng maging panganib ng planeta ng Mars para sa tao. Ito din ang maglalagay ng mga power source, mining, life support structure at mga propellant. Susunda naman ito ng ikalawang misyon na magdadala ng mga unang tao na maniniraan sa Mars by 2024. Bukod dito ay maghahati din ito ng mga panibagong supply para sa posibleng expansion ng City of Mars. Dahil sa obsesyon ni Musk sa planetang ito, sinabi niya na kahit ang kanyang mga ari-arian sa Earth ay handa niyang gamitin para lamang maging posible ang plano niyang sakupin ang Mars. Sa katunayan ay halos lahat ng pondo sa development ng space vehicle na ito ay privately funded ng SpaceX at ni Elon Musk. Ito nga ay tinatayang aabot na sa 300 billion per year as of 2018. Nakikita ni Musk na ang potensyal na makagawa ng isang artificial na syudad at magkaroon ng malawakang exploration sa Mars ay posible at kalaunan ay maging ikalawang planeta nga ito para sa mga tao. Ayon sa kanya, ang mga ito ay posibleng maging realidad sa pamamagitan ng terraforming of Mars. Ang hypothesis na ito ay naglalayong magkaroon ng rehabilitation process ang planetang ito. Para kasi maging makatotohanan ang terraformation, kailangan ng malakihang pagbabago sa magnetosphere at atmosphere ng Mars. Kailangan din na pataasin ang temperatura nito dahil ang Mars ay isang malamig na planeta. Sa pamamagitan ng pagpapabilis ng greenhouse effect, iniisip nila na posibleng mapainit nito ang atmosphere ng Mars at kalaunan ay matunaw ang mga ice reserves nito. Pinag-aaralan din ng mga eksperto ng NASA ang posibilidad na gumawa ng mga selyadong biodomes kung saan ilalagay ang mga oxygen producing cyanobacteria at algae na tutulong sa pagpuproduce ng mga oxygen sa lupa ng Mars. Kung sakaling magtagumpay ang eksperimentong ito, gagawa sila ng marami at malalaki pang mga biodomes na kalaunan ay posible ng tirahan ng mga tao. Ayon naman sa pag-aaral ng NASA scientist na si Jim Green, kung maglalagay ng magnetic dipole field sa pagitan ng Mars at ng araw, matutulungan nito na may isaayos ang atmosphere ng planetang ito. Sa simulation niya ay pagkatapos lamang ng ilang taon ay magkakaroon na ito ng halos kalahati ng atmospheric pressure na katulad ng sa Earth. Bukod pa dito, dahil wala ng mga solar wind, ang mga nagyayelong ice caps ay matutunaw na at kalaunan ay posibleng magiging karagatan ng Mars. Sa kasalukuyan ay ginagawa na ng SpaceX ang sasakyang pangkalawakan na Starship na tinatayang kayang magdala ng 100 metric tons ng cargo payloads. Plano nila na maging reusable ang spacecraft na ito para magamit nila sa magiging biyahe mula Earth patungong Mars and vice versa. Sa ngayon ay nasa second stage na ang manufacturing nito at ayon kay Elon Musk, posibleng in 2 to 3 years ay magkakaroon na ito ng test flight. Nito lang August 2, 2020 ay matagumpay na nakabalik ang SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft na sinakyan ng dalawang astronaut mula sa NASA na nag-launch noong May 30, 2020. Si Bob Benken at Doug Harley ang mga unang tao na sumakay sa SpaceX spacecraft. Ang sasakyan nito ay nagdala ng dalawang astronaut sa International Space Station at matagumpay naman na nakabalik sa Earth pagkatapos ng dalawang buwan. Ang tagumpay na ito ni Musk ay tila mas nagbigay ng buhit ng luwanag sa pangarap niya na masakop ang planeta ng Mars. Sa ngayon ay wala pang launching na nasisimulan para sa Mars mission pero ayon kay Musk, posible na magamit ang isa sa mga SpaceX rocket sa susunod na misyon papunta naman sa buwan by 2021 bago ito gamitin sa planeta ng Mars. Kamakailan lamang ay nagkaroon ng ilang tweets si Elon Musk tungkol sa kanyang detalyadong plano para sa Mars mission. Sinabi niya na 
nais niyang makabuo ng syudad na kayang tirhan ng isang milyong tao sa planetang ito sa pumamagitan ng pagbuo ng 1,000 Starship Spacecraft. Sa kanyang estimate ay kung makakapagpalipad sila ng tatlong spacecraft araw-araw, nakakapagdala sila ng isang milyong tao sa Mars sa mga susunod na dekada at makakapagbigay sila ng napakaraming trabaho dito sa Red Planet. Gusto din niyang makasama sa Mars kahit ang mga walang pera sa pamamagitan ng isang loaning system na pwede kahit kanino. Abangan ang ating mga susunod pang kabanata sa ating serye ng Mars and Space Exploration. Siguradong sa mga darating na panahon ay mas marami pang exciting na update mula sa space expedition na ito. And before we end this video, shoutout muna sa ating mga solid na katropa. Arlene Mercado and Mercado Family Ivan Canensha Maria Cristina Sherilyn Esmilia Ernie Mantawil Jan Ray Biagan Russo Mendoza and kay Rochelle Quemado Salamat po sa inyong pagsuporta Kung nagustuhan nyo ang video na ito katropa make sure to hit the like button bilang suporta sa ating video Mag-comment ka na rin sa iba ba kung ano ang reaksyon mo tungkol sa video na ito sa pagsakop ng Mars. Alright guys, maraming salamat sa pag-tune in and kita-kits tayo sa ating next video. A magnificent building completed through mankind's creativity in overcoming nature. Here is another proof of mankind's greatness. It is a record of fighting against the impossible and the outcome of infinite tenacity to overcome mankind's every limitation. Indisputable grandeur and refinement, the technology that made this possible. The arena was inspired by ancient architecture, by accomplishing a magnitude that exceeds the scale of ancient architecture. It has created a new miracle of 21st century construction technologies. The Philippine arena was designed with aesthetics in mind, and every aspect of it was built with a grand and enormous scale. designed to create seamless flow and harmony, creating an enormous space in which communities can interact. The Philippine Arena is a multi-purpose facility for hosting large gatherings and various sports matches, as well as performances and events with maximum convenience for the audience. Now the Philippine Arena stands as the new landmark and pride of the Philippines. The Philippine Arena was an innovation from the start. The Philippine Arena project was executed pursuant to the design and build contract, so every process from design to the actual construction has been done by Hanwha ENC. The design by the first architectural firm was optimized into a viable design through structural reviews. In particular, the safest and most beautiful angle and curvature of the giant dome were determined to withstand external loads such as heat and wind. Unlike the conventional construction method of building from the bottom, the Philippine Arena was built with a new construction order where the top was built first. This innovative approach made it possible to execute various processes such as terrace and reinforcement.
reinforce steel bar construction at the same time, securing greater flexibility and shortening the construction period. In the reinforced concrete construction, twice the amount of reinforced steel bars compared to ordinary constructions were for withstanding earthquakes and improving durability. Furthermore, anti-earthquake structural engineering was applied. And to meet the absolute target date on time, Hanwha ENC implemented an innovative space frame system. The space frame system is a new technology that dramatically reduces the weight of steel frames compared to conventional methods. The steel frame can be welded on the ground to minimize the amount of elevated welding required. This innovative method also prevents seat loss caused by internal columns and eliminates blind spots. The construction was carried out by dividing the building into a total of 46 blocks, assembling the blocks on the ground and installing them. Therefore, other processes could be performed on the interior of the building while the assembly took place, resulting in a two-month reduction of the construction period. The crucial factor in the installation was minimizing error Adopting the lightweight SPS minimized the use of lifting equipment during installation. Being able to use smaller equipment added greater flexibility in the order of the construction. The SPS makes it possible to assemble all the components in the factory, making it the ideal choice for adding greater precision to the construction and shortening the construction period. millimeters. Expansion joints were designed in the lower structure to maintain a suitable distance between buildings and to prevent building damage or collapse in case of an earthquake. Technologies to withstand strong winds and frequent typhoons were also researched and applied. Hanwha ENC performed various simulations based on typhoon data over the past 50 years and applied its results to designing the roof and the structure. The roof of the Philippine arena consists mainly of the roof, gutter, nosing, and back of bone. The surface of the world's largest roof was finished 
seamless look with 187 meter extrusion molded sheets. Furthermore, technology for absorbing expansion caused by the tropical heat were developed and applied. Considering the poor local conditions, such as the unstable power supply and frequent blackouts, the Philippine Arena was equipped with a backup power plant with enough capacity to carry 100% of the power load to provide sufficient power for hosting events without power failures. judging by the distressing scenes we've seen in many of the hospitals in India. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand to the fire but it's no use cause you can't stop it from shining through it's true baby let the light shine through if 
Let the light 